What's up everybody? In this video, we're gonna learn about three things, cash flow from assets, cash flow to shareholders, and cash flow to bondholders, and how they relate to one another. And to start the video off, let's do a little review. So when you're starting a company, you need money, so you go in the market and you issue a bunch of bonds and you issue a bunch of equity. You take that money, you buy yourself some assets, and then your assets start making you some income. And in this example, let's be a little bit more specific. Let's say that our assets are making us cash flow. So this arrow here represents the cash flow that we're getting from our assets. And then obviously bondholders and equity holders aren't just going to give us money and not expect anything in return. So this arrow represents here the cash flow that we're going to have to pay to the bondholders that lend to us money. And then this arrow here represents the cash flow that we pay to the shareholders or the equity holders. And because this diagram here represents a balance sheet where the left side has to equal the right side, we can make this equation here. So the cash flow from assets has to equal the cash flow to bondholders plus the cash flow to shareholders. And this general equation here is what this video and the next few videos is going to be based on. The way I'm gonna organize this note or this video is I'm going to take each of these components and go into more detail with them. And I'm gonna do that all over the board and there's gonna be a lot of footnotes, a lot of references, but in the end, it's all gonna flow back to this general equation. So the first component from the general equation that we're going to talk about is this cash flow from assets. So I put a little footnote here, one, and cash flow from assets equals operating cash flow minus net capital spending minus changes in networking capital. And the first component from the cash flow from assets that I'm going to explain is this operating cash flow. So I put a footnote two and operating cash flow I'm going to explain here and what it equals. And the best way to explain operating cash flow is through a income statement. So I drew a very general income statement here. So we got the sales minus the cost minus the depreciation and that gives us earnings before interest and taxes. I labeled that as EBIT here. And then earnings before interest and taxes, we subtract the interest, subtract the taxes and then we get our net income. And the way that you wanna derive operating cash flow from an income statement is you wanna start with your net income and you want to add back to it any expenses that we took away that weren't operating cash flows. So operating cash flow I rewrote as OCF here and operating cash flow is equal to net income and now let's add back the expenses that aren't operating cash flows. So let's go up the income statement. So we got net income, taxes, those are considered operating cash flows so we leave those in net income, interest, is not considered an operating cash flow, it's considered a financing expense. So we would add the interest expense to net income, and then let's keep going. Earnings before interest and taxes, that's more so a heading instead of an actual item on the income statement, so we could skip that. Next is depreciation. Depreciation is not a operating cash flow. In fact, it's a non-cash expense, so we also have to add it back. So we add back depreciation here, and then we keep going up the income statement, costs and sales, those are operating expenses, so we leave those. So we got operating cash flow is equal to net income plus interest expense plus the depreciation. And all we did, we started with net income, and then just went up the income statement, and then added back any expenses that weren't considered operating cash flows. Now another common way to get operating cash flow is instead of starting at the net income, you can also start at the earnings before interest and taxes. So I labeled that as EBIT here. And starting at the earnings before interest and taxes, that's actually more common than what you're going to see more in this course than starting with the net income. I wanted to show you starting with the net income initially, just to show you the intuition of how operating cash flow works, how we start with the net income and then we're adding back expenses that don't fit that operating description. So if we're gonna start with earnings before interest and taxes in this case, let's forget for now everything below it. Let's uh, figure out what we have to add back to what was already taken out from sales to get that EBIT number. And if we go up from EBIT, we run into depreciation again. And as we've mentioned before, depreciation is a non-cash expense, so it's not a operating cash flow. So we add back the depreciation to the earnings before interest and taxes. And then after depreciation, costs and sales, those are operating cash flows, so we leave them as is. And now let's figure out everything below earnings before interest and taxes. And now that we're working downwards, 
through the income statement. Because we mentioned that interest expense is not an operating expense, it's a financing expense, we don't want to include that expense when we're going downwards through the income statement. We just want to include the taxes because that is an operating expense. So we're going to subtract the taxes. Now you may be asking yourself why didn't we add back the interest like we did here? And the reason is, and it's a little bit confusing, but try to follow me here. When we were adding back the interest expense here, we started at net income and we were moving up the income statement. So when you're moving up the income statement, you want to add back any non-operating expenses that you took away to get to net income. But since from this point, this earnings before taxes plus depreciation, after that point, we're going to be moving down the income statement. We want to forget about any operating or non-operating expenses. So we forget about the interest and we just want to subtract any operating expenses, which is this taxes. So when you're moving down the income statement, you're subtracting or you're taking into account operating expenses. When you're moving up the income statement, you're adding back any expenses that you took away that are not operating. That last part may have been a bit confusing, so play it back a couple of times, but I'm going to move on. The only thing you want to remember from all of that explanation is this operating cash flow equals earnings before interest and taxes plus depreciation minus taxes. That's the formula for operating cash flow that you're going to most commonly use in this course. The next thing from the cash flow from assets formula that we're going to expand on is this net capital spending. So I put a footnote of three there. So net capital spending, the general formula for that is ending fixed assets minus beginning fixed assets plus depreciation. So to illustrate net capital spending, we're going to do it through an example. And the way you want to think about net capital spending is basically how much money is spent on fixed assets. So money spent on fixed assets. So in this example, let's try to figure out the money spent on fixed assets without using this formula that I gave you. Let's try to do it intuitively. So at the beginning of the year, there's $10,000 worth of fixed assets. And then at the end of the year, there's $12,000 worth of fixed assets. And then during the year, the fixed assets depreciate by $2,000. So let's forget about this $12,000 ending figure for the fixed assets for now and let's just focus on this $10,000 at the beginning what the fixed assets were worth and the depreciation of $2,000 during the year. Now if there were no purchases or sales of fixed assets during the year then the fixed assets at the end of the year should be worth they started off as $10,000 and then they depreciated by 2000. So technically at the end of the year, if you've made no other purchases or sales, your fixed assets should be worth $8,000. But we're told in the example that the ending fixed assets figure is $12,000, not $8,000. So where did that extra $4,000 come from? Well, that must have been money that we spent on new fixed assets. So that $4,000 there represents our net capital spending. So one more time, how do we get that figure? Well, we start off with $10,000 worth of fixed assets. They got depreciated by $2,000. So at the end of the year, they should be worth $8,000, the current fixed assets we have. But they're showing that the ending figure is $12,000. So we must have purchased or we must have spent $4,000 on new fixed assets to get to that ending figure of 12,000. So that 4,000 represents our net capital spending. But if you don't wanna do it this sort of intuitive way, you could have also just plugged it into this formula that I gave you. So the ending fixed assets of $12,000 minus the beginning fixed assets of $10,000 plus the depreciation of $2,000. Well, all of this, 12,000 minus uh, 10,000 is 2,000 plus 2,000. That gives us $4,000 worth of capital spending which is the same amount that we got here. I just wanted to show you how net capital spending works in an intuitive way so you could learn it better. 
The next portion from the cash flow from assets that we're going to deal with is the changes in networking capital. I put a footnote of four here. So four changes in networking capital. Well, basically that's just equal to your ending networking capital minus your beginning networking capital. And if you remember from accounting, networking capital you get from your balance sheet and that's just equal to your current assets minus your current liabilities. So to get your ending networking capital, you're going to have to go to that balance sheet at the end of the year and then take the current assets minus the current liabilities and that would be your ending networking capital. And then for the beginning networking capital that's represented by this bracket, you'll go to the beginning balance sheet and then take the current assets minus the current liabilities on that balance sheet. Now sometimes questions will straight away give you the ending networking capital and beginning networking capital, but don't expect it. Worst case scenario they're going to give you the balance sheet and you're gonna to have to actually get the current assets and current liabilities from both at the beginning of the year and the end. So as a summary of cash flow from assets what we did was we took the general formula that this whole chapter is going to be based on this one in the square here and then we took the cash flow from assets and then we broke down cash flow from assets into three separate components. Then we took each of these components and then broke them down further here. So the operating cash flow was here, net capital spending is here, and then the changes in networking capital are there. Now I'm going to get into detail on the cash flow to bondholders and cash flow to shareholders, and I'm going to erase this portion here. So make sure you just continue the note under changes in networking capital. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.